Hello, today we'll look at the prevention of diabetes mellitus. Prevention means that we don't want a patient to get diabetes mellitus. Because we have something called pre-diabetes, pre meaning before diabetes. That is when the patient is having levels, so values, that are just before diabetes. And this is our op opportunity. We want to prevent these type of patients to slip into diabetes. So the risk factors for getting diabetes are many. To, to just name some of them. You have a parent your father or your mother, these are called first relative. These, uh, these parents maybe had cardiovascular disease or diabetes. This in itself is already a risk factor. So if you have uh, parents that had this, then please always go to the doctor very early on. We say that you should always go to the doctor when you have problems. But in these cases, we want to prevent diabetes. Then if you have relatives, then go early on. Also, if you are living a very sedentary lifestyle, also if you have hypertension, dyslipidemia, meaning your lipids are high, for example, LDL cholesterol or very low amount of HDL cholesterol. And also if you have a disease called polycystic ovary syndrome, so these are the main risk factors. There are many others. Obesity, for example, BMI of more than 25 and together with these risk factors are then an indication of actually checking the values. Values. And which values are we talking about? We are talking about fasting plasma glucose and hemoglobin A1c. These are the values that we need to check by the doctor visit. And usually most, most patients that are more than 45 years of age should take these values. So more than 45 years of age or if you had a gestational diabetes, if you're a woman, that meaning you had diabetes during your pregnancy, then that's a risk factor. And if you are, are having a BMI of more than 25, together with these risk factors that I told you, let's name them once again. We had first relatives of cardiovascular disease and diabetes. You are living a very sedentary lifestyle. You have hypertension, you have dyslipidemia, and you have polycystic ovary syndrome. So once again, these patients need to be checked for what? Fasting plasma glucose and hemoglobin A1c. And there are some cutoff values, which we dealt with in another video, above which levels we call it pre-diabetes and diabetes. Now, what we need to do to prevent diabetes to happen is to do four main things. There are many things we can do, but four main things. Behavior modification. We need to modify your thoughts, your behavior. Your behavior means that what, what habits do you have? We need to change your habits. So habit formation is the most important one. And habit formation is actually then including exercising, diet, and stop smoking. These are all bad habits that we need to reduce. And which diet do we talk about usually? DASH diet, have you heard about that? DASH diet or Mediterranean diet? We, we know that we have 100,000 types of diets. I'm not proposing that this diet is the best but it has been shown in most studies that the DASH diet or Mediterranean di diet is the best one long term because the compliance is very high. Compliance means that the patient is adhering to the diet for a very, very long time because this is more important than succeeding for a diet for a couple of weeks. We need to have a diet for life. And DASH diet is actually an acronym which is standing for diet in approaches, so dietary approaches to stop hypertension. So that is D-A-S-H. That is meaning we have a diet approach for stopping high blood pressure, so stop hypertension. So it, this diet was actually made to stop hypertension, to reduce hypertension, but it has been shown that this is good for every disease. Because what does this contain? It's, this is, as we said, Mediterranean type of diet. It contains a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, a lot of whole grains, beans, nuts, seeds. You have a lot of olive oil. We can drink two glasses of wine, as we have seen with the French French guys, these are living longer than we are actually in, in other parts of Europe or in other parts of the world. Because in the French 
community they have a lot of wine they are drinking one to two glasses of wine this is very good also then of course we have fish a lot of fish with omega-3 fats and a very good meat and poultry can be eaten also also and then we are allowed to eat low dairy products i know that many people are against dairy but a low amount of dairy is actually good uh, i'm not saying that you should drink milk every day i'm just saying that you should include it a little bit in your diet it can be cheese and it can be some milk it can be some yogurt okay this is a typical mediterranean diet and then of course red meat red meat can also be eaten it is not dangerous this is only only dangerous when you are exceeding a certain amount you should not eat red meat every day you can eat it one maximum two times a week for example and not so much of it uh, uh, red meat also contains a lot of good proteins a lot of good iron so this is not dangerous the, the, the reason why people start to argue uh, about one diet being better than the other is usually because of the overdose they do it water is bad for you if you drink too much water is bad if you drink too less you should drink a normal amount and this is true for everything oxygen is bad for you if you have it too much oxygen is bad for you if you have too less you should have the optimal level and this is the problem you will see studies showing that it's bad and you will see studies showing that it's good and the only difference is is because the concentration or the amount was too high or too less that's the whole concept of, of diet. So when I say that these things that I included here are good, then it's good, but it depends on how much you eat it. Okay, that was diet. And then of course, stop smoking. This is something that we know we should stop smoking because this will increase diabetes. It will increase cardiovascular disease and all other diseases. Then we had exercise. How much should we exercise? 30 minutes a day is more than enough. You don't need to do more. And please, do it almost every day at least three times a week because you need to somehow reach a level of at least 150 minutes a week and we are talking about aerobic and strength strength training so we need both you you, you cannot only walk and you cannot only run you need to uh, increase your muscle mass because a muscle mass when that increases you will actually have the uh, reduced insulin resistance so the sensitivity of insulin will be higher therefore you need to exercise at least 150 minutes per minute uh, per week it can be more it's better if you the more you do the better but this is also a certain certain threshold of course if you do it 500 minutes or you do it 2000 like the athletes do then it's toxic then it's bad for you so you see sport exercise is also bad if you do, overdo it so keep around 150 to 300 minutes per week that is at least do 30 minutes a day of walking of bicycling of strength training okay now what can we what can we do if the patient tries all these things and it doesn't work it means that we see that the pre-diabetes starts to get into diabetes then we call it we have a pre-diabetic patient with a failure of lifestyle modification we need to add metformin metformin is a very good medication that can be given 850 milligram once daily and if necessary then we can go on with two times daily if if it's uh, if it's necessary what i mean with necessary is that we always check the lab values and we and we see the by the doctor's office that we are going in the right, right direction so we tried lifestyle modifications and we tried metformin and it's going in the right direction right direction so we need both and, uh, and the best thing would be to only do lifestyle so you don't need to get into this zone okay so what 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 have uh, we talked about today we have talked about prevention and prevention means as we said behavior modification diet exercise and uh, stop smoking we have talked about that we can add to this mix some metformin if it's needed we have talked about that the indication for metformin is actually when the lifestyle is going bad so it is not working enough but there are also some other indications for example it has been shown that uh, if people are less than 60 years of age then metformin is better if they are more than 60 somehow for some reason the metformin is not usually working 
So metformin is very good for patients that are less than 60 or they have gestational diabetes or they are having a BMI of more than 35. So you see, I, I, I made a statement before about the BMI being more than 25 and with risk factors and that being a risk for diabetes, that is something else. That is a risk for, of, for getting type 2 diabetes. Here now I'm talking about pre-diabetic patients who are actually then uh, needing metformin and the indications for giving metformin in this case is a BMI of 135 or gestational diabetes or simply they are less than 60 years of age. And we know uh, that we need to do these regular checkups. How often do we need to do it? We can do it, for example, uh, every year if it's a pre-diabetic patient or if it's uh, simply an asymptomatic patient with no symptoms, the lab values of this fasting plasma glucose and hemoglobin A1c was normal, then we only need to do it every three years. Okay, so that, that is actually concluding uh, the presentation because we don't need we don't need to go into more details about prevention if we are doing all these points so thank you very much for listening bye bye